Hello and welcome to this uninterruptible power supply or UPS monitoring tutorial. The information in this tutorial comes from DPS Telecom and these are several of the secrets, tips and tricks that we've picked up over the years designing monitoring solutions for UPS systems. Over the next few minutes I'm going to be walking you through some basic UPS definitions, discussing why it's really so important that you monitor your UPS systems. I'll show you how you can go about monitoring a UPS and show you some real-world examples such as the diagram shown on your right which I'll explain in just a few minutes. As you know a UPS is a backup power source to be activated automatically when the main power source fails. It needs to take over supplying power quickly within about 25 milliseconds of power loss to make sure that equipment stays online. Typically UPS systems will have a short to medium term battery life. They're intended to fill in the holes not to be a long term power solution. And UPS systems come in many different sizes, everything from industrial telecom to IT, say a server closet, server room, or data center, and even some consumer level designs for home offices. In the telecom and IT environment where we'll be focusing today, uh, why is it so important to monitor your UPS? Well, there are quite a few really expensive things that can go wrong if you don't have good visibility of your UPS systems, uh, you can simply run out of battery charge and then when the site goes dark you can no longer provide service. So that's obviously a very expensive problem. Also high temperatures can cause damage to battery cells. Uh, discharging them too deeply can damage cells and dramatically shorten their usable lifespan. And those are expensive to replace. And also a bad float voltage anytime you're away from that ideal range will either dry out the batteries or create sulfate deposits. So now you know how important it is to monitor your UPS, let's take a look at how do you actually do that. As promised, I'll be walking you through this application drawing. Uh, first, let me cover a few of the concepts behind the architecture shown here. First, you don't want to let UPS gear monitor itself. Uh, that can be really tempting now, especially when a UPS has its own web interface and it has some information about the current battery status but it's just a good monitoring principle not to let anything monitor itself because if it fails then you're blind. So you always want to have an independent system but you don't want it to be an overly complicated system because it'll take up rack space, it'll be hard to manage. So you typically want to find a small monitoring device, usually one rack unit or so, that's a good size. You also want to make sure that any monitoring gear you deploy supports the alert format that you need to receive. It might be SNMP over LAN to an alarm master if you're a large company, but if you only have a few sites with a few UPS systems, you might just want to have a phone or voice message or maybe a text message sent to your phone. The fourth tip deals with RTUs. An RTU is a remote telemetry unit, and these are used to monitor a variety of important equipment at remote sites, including a UPS. If you have an RTU to monitor your UPS, however, you may want it to have its own built-in battery backup. And this is very helpful if there are frequent power failures because then when the power fails, the RTU, independent of any other piece of equipment, has its own power supply. So it can continue reporting to you even when power is down to everything else at a site. So now let's take a look at the monitoring device that forms the core of the application drawing I showed you earlier. This is the BVM48, that stands for Battery Voltage Monitor. The back panel, as you can see, has dual power feeds, so it will have backup power from a second source in the event that the first fails. This is very common in industrial telecom sites. You also have multiple analog inputs to monitor data from a variety of sensor types, and there are also several dedicated temperature sensor ports. Next to those, the most striking feature on the back panel are the 24 battery voltage inputs and these are used to track the individual voltages coming from up to 24 different battery cells. This is helpful for identifying the overall health of the string but also identifying if there are one or two cells that are starting to fail that could damage the entire string if they're not dealt with and replaced quickly. On the far right side of the back panel is a LAN port for sending SNMP trap notifications and for giving you access to the built-in web interface. Now that you understand how the BVM is put together, let's take a look at this application drawing. Uh, we have the BVM near the middle with 24 battery cells feeding into its inputs. That data is then transmitted via LAN to both an SNMP manager 
and the web browser interface which can be accessed from any computer on the network just by typing the BVM's IP address into any web browser. Now you have a basic introduction to the concepts of UPS monitoring and you've seen one device that can do it. For more UPS monitoring information I encourage you to contact DPS Telecom. There is a large monitoring reference site located at dpstele.com. You can also search for BVM48 to take a look in more detail at the BVM48 product page or if you'd like to discuss a UPS monitoring project call 1-800-693-0351.